John here guys and today we're going to go over all the tools that you need to fly drones so you're ready to start flying FPV first person view drones and you know you need a controller you need some goggles and you need a drone itself but what do you need in your toolbox in order to keep those drones up and running to do a repair if something goes wrong to even switch out a prop or to build your own from scratch that's something that's a little bit fuzzy so let's clear it up for you number one you need a good set of drivers you can get some inexpensive drivers for about 10 12 bucks and the sizes you're going to need are 1.5 2.0 and 2.5 hex now this is a set of premium drivers i do recommend you invest in a set like this this is like 40 bucks where a cheaper set will be 10 bucks these are super strong steel and will never strip your bolts nothing's more frustrating than stripping a screw on a frame you can't get it apart to replace a simple part and now you're sitting there with a little jeweler saw for hours and hours now if you can get this go ahead and start off with a cheap set and whenever you upgrade get one of these, move that cheap set to your field bag so that you can do repairs out in the field when you're flying. Next up, you need a soldering iron. Now you can get a $10, $20 cheapie on eBay that will work okay, but when you have the chance, I really recommend spending $40 to $50 on a TS-100. This is a portable soldering iron. It's good enough that you can use on the bench to build every single quad that you build and you can keep with you in the field so if you are flying you crash into a tree one little motor wire comes loose instead of having to go home you can repair it in about 20 seconds in the field by hooking up a lipo battery to this and then boom you're off and ready to go this is my recommendation you can also go all the way up and spend 100 or 200 dollars on a hacko or something like that but in my experience for fpv this does the job perfectly so now that you have your soldering iron, the next thing you're gonna need is solder. Now I really recommend you buy quality solder. It's gonna make your life so much easier. The cheap stuff just doesn't melt right. The joints break apart. You wanna spend and get Kester's or MG chemicals. And you wanna get 6337, that 6337 mix is gonna give you the perfect amount of lead. And it also has a rosin core if you get this catch of variety. These little rolls will last you to build, you know, two or three quads. They're about five, six bucks. Or you can spend 30 bucks and get this big roll. It will last you for like a million years. Um, go ahead and get you some solder wick. That's just some copper wire that will allow you to undo a solder joint. We recommend is getting some flux. I just use one of these Kester flux pens. It's very easy. You just kind of wipe it on there before you start soldering. That gives you some flux that will help the solder flow easier, get your joints in there quicker. So you can just get in and out with the solder iron and then boom, your bills will go so much faster. This is something I cheaped out on a lot when I first started and it caused me an unbelievable amount of headaches. I kept thinking I was just a bad solder, and as I actually improved, my joints did not improve, and it was because I was using cheap solder. Don't do it, guys. Invest. You will pay dividends for you. Next thing you're gonna wanna get is hardware. You're gonna wanna get a pack of screws for M3, the screws, and the standoffs and nuts. You're going to want that both in M3 and M2 sizes. Nothing can really ruin your day when you're trying to build and you don't have the right size screw. So different builds are always going to need different sizes. Just buy a couple of these sets, keep them there. I probably have 10 of these in different sizes. And if you do start flying a particular frame that has, say, a brace and you need like a 14 millimeter screw for that arm, Go ahead and buy a pack of just that size, but always keep those packs of general sizes for you never know when you're going to need them. Next up is zip ties. <laughs> That's right, zip ties. Tight zip it. You, you can't even zip it. Zip. Uh, you're always going to need these flying drones to anchor a wire down, to anchor your antenna down, to hold anything together. You're going to need these in different sizes to hold your battery leads and anchor those in place so that when you crash and your battery launches, it doesn't yank and destroy your electronic speed controller. 
You can see on this build I have going, I'm using a couple of zip ties to hold my antennas in place and also to hold my Immortal T Crossfire receiver antenna in place. So you're always gonna need stuff like that. Next up, double-sided tape. There's a lot of different double-sided tapes out there. This is my personal favorite. It is the 3M 30 pound mounting tape. This stuff you can use to mount a receiver to a flight controller, to mount a receiver to a frame, to mount a VTX somewhere. And you can also use them to mount things like race wire to the arms. You always wanna get a layer underneath that race wire so it doesn't cause a short on the carbon of your arms because it could be conductive. This stuff will mount something in place and it will not move. And it's not like epoxy or something because if you pull it from the side, you can remove it and redo it. A roll like this costs 10 or 12 bucks and it'll last you like dozens and dozens of builds. I've had this for a while and it's not even like 20% into the roll yet because I just use a little chunk at a time. This is awesome stuff. Next up is heat shrink. You're going to want to heat shrink in a few sizes. Some people like to heat shrink their arms under the motors. You're always going to want to heat shrink your receiver so that nothing touches it. I personally also heat sink a lot of my video transmitters on the analog side. And of course, when you add a capacitor like this to help video noise and help you absorb any of those voltage spikes, you're going to want to not leave it like this. You're going to want to put some heat shrink on there. So get it in different sizes that you're going to need. I carry this big size to be able to go over this specific use case, but I also use a lot of smaller heat shrinks for other tasks. So that's something you're always going to want. And while you're out of it, now you can melt this heat shrink with your soldering iron or with a lighter. But if you want to get the cleanest, um, you're going to want to use a heat gun. You can buy one of those at Harbor Freight with that 20% off coupon. It's like 11 bucks. Um, so I keep one of those in the garage for making all of my heat shrink stuff look great. And number 10 is caps, capacitors. Like we talked about right here that you're gonna to wanna to put your heat shrink onto. This will help you with those voltage spikes. That'll make your electronics last longer. A lot of times in a crash, you will get a voltage spike that could fry the board and having a capacitor on there can be the difference to having to replace your entire electronic speed controller and possibly other components to the capacitor absorbing that voltage spike and letting you fly with no repercussions. It's not like a aura of invincibility. Things can still fry if you crash hard enough, but it does add a layer of safety. I was frying so many ESCs back in 2017 when I first started racing. And ever since I started adding caps to boards, it's really almost all but stopped. Now, part of that is because the ESCs have gotten better, but just on the safe side, these things cost like a dollar and they come in different sizes. This is a small size that you might use for a micro and then for a full size six inch, you're gonna use like a 1000 or a 680, 35 uh, microfarad capacitor. So those are the tools you need. Go ahead, if you're starting to fly FPV, accumulate all those as soon as you can. Just keep them in your bench. You never know when you're gonna need them and it's gonna make your builds last longer. It's gonna make your building time easier. You wanna reduce the time that it takes to build. You wanna improve the quality of your builds so that all of that extra time that you're saving can go towards flying. That's what you really wanna do with this hobby. So what do you think in the comments, guys? Is there any must-have tools that I missed? Leave them in the description below and I will put them up on the screen. If you need any of this stuff, I have links of where you can get all this stuff. If you click any of those links, it does help the channel and help me and help me make these videos to help you guys. Thanks guys.